From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Monday the 6th of June 2022. Good afternoon. Today we'll be discussing some of the biggest stories, including the four-day workweek trial and Kazakhstan's referendum. We'll also be answering today's big question about Germany's defence fund. On the 5th of June, Ukrainian forces took back large parts of Severodonetsk, a city on the eastern front in the region of Luhansk Oblast. Serhii Haidai, the governor of Luhansk, said that Ukrainian forces had taken back 70% of the city in the past two days, and that Russian forces now solely control the eastern outskirts of the city. Although he added today that the situation has again worsened slightly, as there's intense street fighting in the city. The fact that Ukrainian forces have been allowed to successfully counterattack in Severodonetsk, where the Kremlin had concentrated the majority of its efforts, also means that Russian troops continue to storm the city, leaving the Russian forces in Kharkiv Oblast vulnerable, where, according to a Russian telegram, Ukrainian forces have also started a counterattack. Over the weekend, North Korea fired eight short-range missiles in an apparent missile test, sparking increased tensions on the Korean peninsula. Specifically, North Korea fired them into waters in the east of the Korean peninsula, potentially in reaction to the election of a new Korean president, who has a policy of being tougher on North Korea, in stark contrast to his predecessor, who opted to encourage dialogue with the North. In response to this, South Korea and the US have, this morning, launched eight more missiles into the waters in the east of the Korean peninsula. In total, seven were launched by South Korea and one was launched by the US. As the Joint Chiefs of Staff in South Korea explained, they were designed to show that even if North Korea provokes missiles from multiple locations, South Korea and the US have the ability and readiness to immediately strike with precision. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. On Sunday, Kazakhs headed to the polls to vote on a number of constitutional reforms. In a drive for a new Kazakhstan after bloodshed back in January over fuel price spikes, the current president proposed dismantling the super-presidential system in place in Kazakhstan. Under the super-presidential system, Takayev's predecessor, Nazarbayev, retained the title of Elbasi, or Leader of the Nation, a title that gave Nazarbayev significant influence over policymaking in the country, long after leaving the presidency. The SNAP referendum saw a turnout of over 68%, with preliminary results showing Kazakhs overwhelmingly backing the move to strip Nazarbayev of policymaking influence. The reforms will also prevent relatives of the president from holding government positions. Nazarbayev had, ultimately, appointed his family and a number of in-laws to key government positions before his downfall. In a surprise announcement this morning, Sir Graham Brady sent out a press release claiming that the threshold had been met for a no-confidence vote to be held. More surprising still is that the vote is set to be held later today, between 6pm and 8pm, and we should know the result soon after. While this obviously doesn't look good for Johnson, there is an argument that the vote taking place today is actually beneficial to the Prime Minister. There are set to be two by-elections later this month, which the Tories may well lose. Conservative whips are likely worried that if the vote of no confidence wasn't held today, it could be held following two defeats, something that would certainly empower the rebels. If Johnson survives the vote, then he cannot face a similar vote of no confidence for a year. If he doesn't survive the vote, then a leadership election will be triggered. In what will come as welcomed news to employees everywhere, a trial this week is taking place in the UK to see whether a four-day working week is practical. In total, about 70 companies are taking part in the trial, which will run for six months. Employees who are part of the trial will get 100% of their pay, but only be expected to work for 80% of their hours. Crucially, the trial is looking at whether employees are still as productive. The trial is thought to be the world's largest pilot scheme, and it involves more than 3,000 employees. Some employees have already stated that they believe the trial will be successful. But while some believe that it will increase staff morale and productivity, others think that this wouldn't work and that there's a long list of professions that this model just really wouldn't work for. 
That's all we have time for on YouTube today, but if you want more, including answering today's big question about Germany's defence fund, and coming soon an argument about who could replace Boris Johnson, then watch the extended edition of The Daily Briefing over on Nebula. Nebula subscribers not only get everything you've already watched ad-free, but also an extended edition of the show every single day, available to watch on Nebula or stream on your podcast app of choice. So if you want to support the channel and get a more extensive daily briefing every day, you'll want to sign up. And there's good news. Our friends at CuriosityStream, the streaming service which offers some of the best documentaries, is offering a deal whereby you can get both platforms, CuriosityStream and Nebula, for less than $15 a year. That's all the best documentaries you could want on CuriosityStream and then more TLDR on Nebula, including the extended briefing, other full exclusive TLDR videos and it's always ad-free. Click the link below to get both services for less than $15 a year and support the channel.